Hello and good afternoon, friends. Today, especially in this nice, nasty weather we're having, I want to talk to you about septic systems and hurricanes. How do they go together? Can your septic system function while a hurricane's coming, especially with the hurricane that we've got on the eastern shore right now? Let's get into it. So I get asked this question quite a bit, not necessarily for hurricanes, but usually it's going to be more for weather conditions, right? Like heavy rain, thunderstorms, etc. And the question is, will my septic system still function in a heavy downpour or is there anything I need to worry about for my septic system? And I think the question's a complicated question, but I think there's a couple ways that we can approach this. So let's kind of go into the basics of how do septic systems work? When your tank is in place, right, they're going to basically find the lowest point on the property so that way all of the sewage water from the home can gravity feed to the tank. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can pump the wastewater up and get it to the tank uh, at a higher elevation or a further distance, but that costs money, right? So the further you want to go away, the higher you want to go, the more expensive it's going to be to do, right? So most of the time, you'll actually have the tank in the lowest lying area. Now, the problem with putting something in the lowest lying area is depending on where you're at, you could have issues with the water table flooding or any kind of groundwater getting into it because water will always go where the path of least resistance is. If it's easier for the water to go into the uh, little valley area, guess what? That's where it's going to go, right? So when we're designing septic systems, we're going to do what's called a perk test. This perk test is basically where they're going to dig a couple holes in the property see what kind of soil you're working with, fill those holes with water and time it and see how fast that water dissipates. From there, they're able to say, all right, the corner of the property is nothing but clay. It's not gonna work, we can't do that. The other corner of the property, it's got decent soil. We're gonna put everything over there. And so then you design the system to accommodate your daily flow. Now you might be asking, well, what is, what is the daily flow? And the daily flow is gonna be calculated off the size of the home and the bedrooms, right? At least in our area, we do everything by bedroom count. Back in the day, they would do things by square footage, and I'm sure your town might do something a little bit different, right? So everybody's a little bit different in how they organize themselves. But over here, bedrooms. So what they'll do is they'll say, all right, you've got a four bedroom home. Each of those bedrooms is assumed to use 150 gallons of water per day, and then they'll design everything accordingly. So if you have a four bedroom home, that means your system should be capable of handling 600 gallons of water every 24 hours for the next 30 or 40 years before you start to have any real issues to worry about. So now we get into the issue of groundwater. Homes are large, right? Even a two bedroom house has a pretty large roof and that surface area can collect a lot of rain. And if you have your downspouts discharging right on top of the septic system, you potentially run the risk of having additional groundwater get into your system and cause oversaturation. That's why it's very important to make sure that your risers watertight, your clean outs appropriately sized, is attached to the tank correctly. There's no breaks or any ability for the groundwater to get into the system, especially if the house is being occupied at its maximum occupancy. So back to that four bedroom house scenario, the max amount of people you could have on that property would be eight. So if you have eight people living there every single day, you don't want any additional water getting into the tank causing problems. You also run into some issues with leaking toilets, basically running continuously, even if it's only a gallon per minute, that adds up pretty quick, especially every 60 minutes, now that's 60 gallons, over the course of a day, week, month, now you're in some trouble. So now that's downspouts. So if you have your downspouts over the, over the tank or the drain fields, that can cause some problems. But the reason you're here is the hurricanes and hurricanes drop a ton of water on properties. So for perspective, in our area, they're saying that it's gonna raise the high tide by about three and a half feet for all of the towns next to the Chesapeake Bay. We're also gonna be getting hit with between three to five inches of rain. That is a ton of water it's gonna be dumped right on top of your septic system. Now, if the designer did everything that they're supposed to and designed this, the swales and the ground and the geology correctly to dissipate most of that rainwater away from the septic, you're gonna be perfectly fine, right? You might have a little bit of additional saturation, so you might not wanna like inspect it uh, directly in the middle of the hurricane or a couple days after the hurricane. But in the grand scheme of things, is it really gonna cause that big of an issue? Not really. Now, if your septic system's on its last leg, let's just say that you have a 50 year old system where it's got some moderate saturation, some heavy saturation, and you get five inches of rain, 
eh, it could be enough to push you over the edge for a week or two, uh, maybe permanently, depending on how, how, how close you were to the end, right? So all that to be said, with this hurricane that's coming in, don't stress too much about your septic, right? You don't have to necessarily worry about not flushing the toilet, right? You wanna be able to be a normal human being. You're more than likely gonna run into some issues with your well, not having power, uh, but the septic should be more than fine. If you are on a coastal area, you do run the risk of everything getting swamped. Concrete does float, but hopefully as long as that tank's full, you shouldn't have to worry about it floating up. If you just pumped your tank and the hurricane's coming in, might be a good idea to start running some water to get some weight in that tank so it doesn't pop out on you, <laughs> right? So I hope that you found this useful. Hope that you found this informative. If you're in the area of the hurricane that's coming through, please make sure you do some preparation so that we're not running into any issues have some additional stuff on supply just in case you lose power. Our area is not gonna get hit super hard, but for those of you who are not in my area, make sure you're doing smart stuff, staying safe, and I hope that you hit that like button, subscribe, and until next time, guys.